The eBay sellers are really cashing in on the current hysteria for germicidal lamps. And I thought I'd get some more because I'm building up a bit of a collection. They are literally passing off everything they can. Anything that lights, purple or blue, they're just passing it off as germicidal. But the ones of interest in this video are this one which tries to look like the germicidal lamp and this one which doesn't, it's just, it's a blue lamp. Let's get all the stuff out of the way and then we'll open these and then we'll hack them. Now that stuff is cleared out the way, let's get up close and personal with these ones. This one I have to say, although it's a fake germicidal lamp, it's an, a nice shade of blue. It'd be nice if you could use it in festoon outside. Unfortunately it has these vents in here, but the construction of it is quite nice. This one's also a fairly attractive lamp. The colour is nice, even though it is just fake UVC. But um, I'll modify this, I'll draw the schematic down and we'll modify it to make it run at lower power because at the moment it's grilling things. We'll tell you what, let's do a test. Let's bring the hoppy tester up and we'll look at the power of these things. So I would say that the maximum I'd really want this to run at is three watts. Let's get a socket up and screw it in and then plug it in. So hoppy says, it's currently running at 4 watts, that's not too bad. But we can lower it, it'll last a lot longer. It's really grilling the LEDs. You can see a slight shimmer. That's probably a capacitive dropper then. Let's try this other one. And see what it's rated at. It's 6 watts and it is going to get pretty hot because uh, it's really pushing those LEDs. It's also going to bake the little driver inside it because I can see a little wrapped driver through that. But we'll open it up and we'll take a look inside and we'll see what it is. So uh, yes, they're both pushing LEDs quite hard as they do. Maximum brightness, shortest life. I wonder why they do that. Oh, I've just, uh, I've just uh, preemptively unscrewed the thing by trying to unscrew it. That's a good design feature. Uh, there's the driver. Ooh, I wonder how many people have done that. So let's take a look at this driver. The construction, uh, I'll screw this on briefly just because I want to pop the uh, outer cover off. If I can. I want to pop the outer sleeve off. Let's see if I can not destroy the lamp in the process. That is not coming off very easily. Maybe I'll just give up. Hold on. Oh, that is on very tightly. Oh, there it's off. This one's construction is quite interesting. It's basically a stick on circuit board. It's a thin, uh, flexible circuit board material. And they've got a circle with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 LEDs. And uh, hold on, let's see how these are wired. Let's bring in the meter and see if they're wired in series parallel arrays. Right, two LEDs have lit there. Let's uh, try it on the side. Polarity difference. New pointy probes. Uh, no LEDs have lit there. Maybe I'm not getting onto the solder connections. Let's try it again around the other way. Two LEDs have lit again. That means that these are just wired as uh, pairs in parallel, but then the whole string in series. Not sure how many LEDs are on this. But the way they've got it configured, they've got a heatsink core with the wires going up through the end onto the circuit board. The circuit board is stuck onto the top and then it's folded over and then it's stuck around the side. And it's actually got a diagonal uh, form instead of coming around to the flat end, they've uh, got it coming around diagonally, and there's also diagonal striations in this lamp that hide that very well. I think the reason it's diagonal is just to break the symmetry so that you don't see a straight line like it, it's folded round. It may also help with uh, avoiding it popping off, I'm guessing, with the heat. Let's take a look at the driver. It's got the classic transformer tape on it which I've just made a mess of stripping off. I shall use my usual technique for discharging a capacitor. I shall put my finger across it. It's not a recommended technique. It is discharged. Uh, is it a bright power chip? It's got the classic, oh no, it's 
different. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I have to fold this right back now. That'll be the rectifier. Okay, okay. This, uh, let me just show you this. There's the rectifier, but look at the other chip next to it. It's just got four pins. I have not seen one in that form before. That is very interesting. What is the number on it? You probably saw the number on it, but I can't because KP1054, it looks like. I'm just going to use a bigger magnifier. Keep in mind, your image is more more bigger than my eyes. KP1054. KP1054. I'm just going to note that down. I have to take a look at this. Uh, KP1054. KP1054. That's very, very interesting. Uh, so it's the classic little driver. It's got the bridge rectifier, the smoothing capacitor, the uh, driver with uh, a sense resistor. I guess that's a sense resistor if it's a very low value. 3.9 ohms. Can you see that? Are you going to be able to see that? I'm not really sure. I think you can. Uh, 3.9 ohms. So that, if you increase the value of that resistor, made it higher, uh, the current through the circuit should go down. I may experiment with that. I may actually try and put that in, although it's very cramped in there. And there's components mounted, I presume, underneath the transformer. Okay. Anyway, let's move on to this one. Because this is one we're modifying. I feel inclined to modify that one as well, but uh, it really is cramped for that resistor. So let's see if we can spudge, spudge the circuit board out of this one to reveal a capacitive dropper. So that's going to be an easy mod. Finger test. Uh, what value is the capacitor? It's a uh, 684. It's 618 nanofarad. So we could change that for a 330 nanofarad capacitor. Uh, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to doodle the schematic of this down. It's not going to have any great surprises. And then uh, we'll change that and we'll see what power we can drop this down to and how it looks. The reverse engineering has been done. I am back. I kind of managed to find that chip. It's made by Kiwi Instruments. This is all I could find about that chip. Let me just zoom down on this. Let's zoom down on that schematic. I'll pop this in here. The KP1054A bridge rectifier, smooth capacitor, that chip, a sense resistor to ground that inducts the LEDs. I don't even see the capacitor in that lamp. I have taken the liberty of modifying since this can only be the sense resistor. And it was 3.9 ohms. I got my packet of surface mount resistors. I found a 10 ohm one that's not written on them. I had to go through every single one of the magnifying glass till I found them. And it's a tiny little resistor, like that little resistor there. Uh, and I swapped it in this, but I've not tried it yet. I thought I'd save that so you could share the moment. Hmm, that's not always a good thing. This one uses a conventional capacitive dropper. As you can see, it's not even in rush limiting. It is the most basic version. So, uh, Input goes direct to the one leg of the bridge rectifier, the other goes via the capacitor that lets a portion of current passed on each half wave. It's got a one mega ohm discharge resistor across it to stop you getting a tingle off the pins when you unplug it. Uh, the output has the capacitor there, which is 4.7 microfarad, 250 volt. It has another one mega ohm resistor across that to basically make the lamp go out quickly. Without that, the lamp would fade down very slowly. And then it's got a rather chunky, big resistor, 33 ohm resistor in series of LEDs. I presume that's for uh, avoid that situation that when an LED goes open circuit uh, and the voltage across that capacitor flies up, then it makes again, it can actually pop. And it, instead of uh, failing in a controlled manner with just the LEDs going out, it can actually blow some of the other LEDs. I presume that's what that's for, but it might also help mitigate some of the flicker. Anyway, let's zoom out and uh, test these because I have replaced the capacitor from 330 uh, uh, from 680 nanofarad to 330 nanofarad. So that should about half its rating. It is worth mentioning that the circuit board does say in it. Uh, 2835 types LEDs times 72, 5 watt. So it is rated as 5 watt. I've still got flux in that. It's a bit messy, not to worry. 
Another thing worthy of note is this exciting, there's a tiny little pad right in the middle, just a tiny little plated through hole, which for no reason at all, is connected to the live incoming supply. Not even anything to do with LEDs, it's just one of the connections here, the red one in this case, which goes to the back, so the actual live pin is just inexplicably connected through to the front on that one wee pad. Very, very strange. Let's bring the whole thing up and test these. One of them may draw absolutely immense amounts current with a loud bang. I'm not really sure. This is the one that I'm a bit worried about. This one I'm fine with. Let's uh, screw it in and we'll see if the power has dropped to an acceptable level. So I shall just leave it all dangling out like that and I shall plug it in and it lights up much lower power, uh, it's dropped down to about 1.7 watts. It's still quite bright though, still amply bright as a nice visual effect of a lamp and that means that this is going to last a lot longer now. So as a decorative lamp, that's a good result. What is this one going to do? It's either going to go bang or it's going to draw significantly lower current. Probably more like 2 watts I would guess. Let's find out. I shall screw it into this unplugged lamp holder. And hope that my solder connection didn't do anything else while I was making it because this could, technically speaking, go kapow. Will it be happy or sad? It lit, it's dropped down to 2.4 watts, which is a lot more acceptable. That's going to last a lot longer. And it still looks nice and bright and blue. It's going to run so much cooler with that. Now that's a good result then. So it turns out, let's say, bridge, those two terminals. Yeah, it's discharged. Turns out that this little uh, chip then is just an absolute, it's very classic of the, a bright power do them as well, but they, they actually manage a three pin version of that that uses devious electronics to fit it into a standard transistor package. This one just uses a standard sort of rectifier package for that. So there we go. Uh, the purpose of this video was originally to show people which lamps are fake and then annoy the Chinese sellers by asking for their money back. But it went on to how some of these ones can be modified. This one's quite hard to modify. Super tiny resistor. This one very easy to modify just by changing that capacitor. But there we go. Interesting and quite fun to do.